All right. Well, I am. Oh. <laughs> I'm here doing my first Zoom interview with uh, somebody to help me on my mythical journey uh, to discover micro labels and labels that people don't always understand very well. And so our our guest today is Miss Katrina Duckworth, or Mrs. Katrina Duckworth, I suppose, who is going to uh, give us a little insight into bisexuality and and uh, what it means to her. And of course, we're gonna we're gonna start out with the bisexual flag, which is a lovely. I think it's one of the prettiest flags. Honestly. I think it is too. With the the pink, the purple, and the blue, gorgeous, lovely colors. Yes. I, I like yeah. it. The the pan pan flag I like too a lot, but mm -hmm. you know. I'm, yeah, I'm it's it's I'm like primary colors off kilter a little. I enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so anyway, um, let's go ahead and have you kind of give your your definition of bisexuality. For me, I feel that bisexuality is an attraction to people who are my gender and people who are not my gender. See, a lot of people kind of have this misconception that it's limited to men and women or just cis men and women. But I think it comes down to like the etymology of when the coin, the, the term was coined, you know, like back then people saw people as male and female. So it was kind of a catch all. Right. Whereas I never really thought about it as not including people who aren't cis because trans men are men and trans women are women like why wouldn't they be included <laughs> right. So, <you> know? <laughs> right yeah, yeah. and and, and uh, honestly the the best definition i've ever heard for bi bisexuality is is attraction to one or more or i'm sorry two or more genders two or more you know yeah so it's whatever you know and 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 i think that's the thing like there 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 is some difference between pan and bi but it's not as big a difference as as you know in in practicality you know like to me to, to you like what's the difference between bi and pan i think that pansexual people for them when they seek a partner they don't think I'd like a boyfriend or I'd like a girlfriend or they just think I'd like a person. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we're, we're the same in that way, but I'm not going to say that all bisexuals are in that same umbrella. You know right. what I mean? Right. I feel like, I feel like bisexuality is an umbrella for everything else. Like, hands you're included in this you may not <laughs> identify as bisexual you identify as pansexual but some people who are bisexual they they don't feel like the pan label fits them for me it's more like um when i was just a baby gay <laughs> <laughs> pansexual wasn't really a terminology that was popular or widely used at that time right i'm thinking we were in high school before that term started being used i really hadn't heard a lot of people use that before so it's like oh i'm bisexual <coughs> it's you know because right. that's what i that's what i knew and the more i think about it the more i think about it is um i feel like pansexual Pain sexuality as as a micro label came out of that need to want to be more inclusive because mm -hmm. a lot of people get hung up on that prefix they're like bye that means two <laughs> yeah i think well, some of that <laughs> honestly though i use pan oriented and the reason that i use pan oriented is because gender is irrelevant for me yeah you know i'm just like indifferent yeah. to it you know if i'm in a yeah. situation and someone's sexy and I can have a good time with them, then I'm not going, well, let me do a general inspection first, you know? So, right. right. But, you know. Yeah. See, I feel that's, that's like the difference. It's, it's, I feel like for, 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 for pansexual people, they don't, they just kind of seek attractive people. 
right. in general right. and they don't really think about it in terms of that the right. whole hearts <laughs> not parts <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think it's nuanced. And I think unless you uh, identify with one label or the other, I think it's kind of hard to understand the nuance between the two of them. Mm -hmm. But I think it also just comes down to personal preference, too. You know, like exactly. what feels right for each individual. Is, I mean, you're not, you can't be wrong about your labels. You know, like you're the one who gets to decide what that suits you. So, yeah. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, for, for me, I feel like even politically, I feel like it's important for me to identify as, as a bisexual because there's so little representation that exists. And if it does exist, it's inaccurate. Right. And there's a lot of erasure, like some of the most famous, wonderful bisexual people have just been, oh, they're gay, like Freddie Mercury. Or you get the opposite, like Lady Gaga. Or just straight, yeah. Yeah. You, know, you get people who, you know, the, the, they might typically partner with the uh, opposite sex or same sex person, but they've said they're bisexual or pansexual. And so they are. It does not yeah. matter who their partner is. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. By no matter who you're with or even if you're not with anybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's it's like your, your like, orientation but, is so important, even if you don't have partners or don't want to have partners. <laughs> it yeah, thought. like, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, what about, uh, are there are there any good inside jokes in the bi community or tropes that, that uh, you know, are pretty common? I mean, I feel like it is true that we don't know how to sit in chairs. Like, <laughs> I'm all over the place. Like... I'll sprawl or maybe maybe I'll cross my legs but I'll cross them until I'm a pretzel <laughs> like, <laughs> it's true I can't do that <laughs> yeah it's like bisexuality means that I'm a I'm a uh I I'm okay flirting with men but terrified of women like <laughs> <laughs> I think that makes sense though like honestly if I wasn't like a egosexual and aromantic you know that was the thing that I always knew it's like I didn't want to date girls and I didn't really know that there was an option other than gay or straight so if you don't right. want to date girls and you can't be gay so you gotta be straight by process of elimination doesn't really work like that but you know that's what I yeah. thought <laughs> yeah I, I did have that moment it was like this moment I, I think it was like I was in middle school not to my mom and she's like it's like Hey mom, like what's what's it mean? What do you think about kissing a girl? And she's like, well, you've had boyfriends, so you're you're not gay. I'm like, but what if I like both? Like, what if that's a thing? Like, I was on to something. <laughs> right, right. I can I can picture you doing it too, like little detective, like. Right. Uh, <laughs> and then of course, like as I've gotten older, that's expanded to just be like, hey, you know not everybody not everybody's one thing or another thing some people are are all things or no things or you know and that's cool i'm still attracted to people you know it like obviously if it if, it, if, if i'm attracted to people with certain genitals and certain other genitals why wouldn't i be therefore attracted to all people <laughs> does yeah, that not make sense yeah like, it doesn't make sense <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> like like when people think about it in terms of um let me let me see where i'm i'm going with this and i have <laughs> dumped tr my train of thought <laughs> but yeah it, it it it's weird when you're a kid you think of things in very black and white ways oh, and yeah. when you become like when you start to you know come of age you're you're a teenager and you're going through puberty and things are confusing and messy mm -hmm. and you're like i'm a little different but i can't put my finger on it you know it's like yeah. <laughs> and it's i mean it's rough especially like where we grow up in oh, rural yeah. appalachia oh, like no like <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's weird because like so many of my friends from those days turned out to be queer but we didn't know what our labels were necessarily back then or that we were queer at the time it's just like right. somehow we just like all sort of like subconsciously glommed together like right you're bi <laughs> and I'm a romantic and then my friend Tanya is a lesbian and you know like blah, 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 you know and and I'm like I don't know what we, we we knew it we were cool queers all the way back then you know <laughs> right <laughs> I, I start to think back to like the people that I rode the bus with the people that hung out with me when I was like a freshman and didn't know anybody outside of my class mm -hmm. and they were all just like they were the gays like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and 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 it was like I don't know. It, it felt like in retrospect, it's like, did they know? I feel like they knew. They had yeah. to have known. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, was, I mean, you I always was had boyfriends in high school. And yeah. so I think it was easy for people to mistakenly think that you were straight. But yeah, you know, I, I, I mean, anyone who spent any time with you back then knew that you liked girls. <laughs> it wasn't right. hard to tell that you liked girls. <laughs> True, true. <laughs> I got to that point where I was like, all right, I'm ready to accept this. And then I just didn't shut up about it because I was like, free now. <laughs> free at last. Free at right. last. Yep. yep. Like, the family aspect of that, it like it took a lot longer for me to to feel comfortable with everybody knowing what I'm not necessarily hiding but not saying. <laughs> all right. Yep. <laughs> I think but, that's why um, it's harder for me to 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 come out as a egosexual than it was a romantic, because everyone knew that I didn't date. You know, the a romantic yeah, is yeah. like, well, duh. But the a egosexual, I mean, that that's a little a little more about my sex life than I usually want to talk about publicly. <laughs> right, right. But, you know, I mean, I've had people be like, I'm so glad you talk about this all the time because I wouldn't have heard of that, and now I know I'm you know gray ace or you know whatever and i'm like it's it's sometimes it's hard to be visibly whatever you know but it's worth it because there's always somebody watching and you know if, yeah. if it just helps one person out my goodness if if you had had someone to come along and tell you that it was great you know that it was totally cool to be bisexual at the right time in your life it would have made a huge difference and the same thing yeah. for me, you know, if, if the terms had existed when we were kids and I, you know, realized that I didn't need to like try to pretend that I wanted to date people, <laughs> then I probably would have been a lot happier, you know, it, it's just right. always, there was always like a thing. Yeah, it's that it comes down to that, that unrealistic expectation that people put on you. Yeah, I have lived this life and therefore I expect that everybody wants to live this life. You should right. go on to get married and have children and, you know, do what people do. But I've noticed like, especially like in the queer community and especially like gay or lesbian people who who fall into that they they'll go and, and they'll get married and they'll have children and they might even spend years there especially the older generation and they're just like eventually they're like you know what i don't have to do this anymore right. i really don't think i ever had to do this right and of course you know i wouldn't say that people in that situation regret their decisions they no. they can only speak to that they have if they have children from that from that i'm sure they love their children but there's something to be said for that like absolute liberation of mm -hmm. being like all right so I'm ready to be who I am and not what everybody else wants me to be all right and you find your tribe you find people yeah. that are like you that understand those things about you that are weird and you've always been like no one else is like this no one else says these things or thinks these things right and then you find other people that have those thoughts and you're just like this is amazing. Oh, <laughs> maybe i'm oh. not alone in this <laughs> <laughs> these are what the allosexuals have always been talking about in the allo romantics okay i get it you know these people that you just have an inherent connection with even though you yeah. don't know them at all you know a lot of the times because you know a lot of my meeting with people is is online you've probably had more uh, connection with bisexuals in person 
than, than, than I would have proportionally to the amount of asexual or aspect people that I've been around, but yeah. Uh, and, and, and do you think that that changes the sort of like by subculture online that there is more capacity for knowing bisexual people in real life and not just in, in online spaces? I think it really depends on the person like um there is something to be said for like that 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 community you know there's a lot of um like a lot of queer people that are bisexual labeled who I identify with and I'm friends with and you know it's and it's there's it's wonderful <laughs> but yeah. then you know there's still people even despite or proximity to bisexual people who just still don't get it yeah and it's some of those people it's nuanced and other people it's it can be it can be harmful really yeah like i'd had an experience with someone dude that i knew in person mm -hmm. who you know seem to be very open-minded I, I spent time with them at a gay club before you know mm -hmm. but when it came down to the subject of if you say that you will not date a bisexual person for example mm -hmm. that's biphobia and people have a hard time grasping that right and they're like well why is that well, you're excluding somebody that you would be attracted to mm -hmm. if they were not attracted to other kinds of people besides right. the person that you are. Right, right. And a lot of times they're doing that for reasons that are really deeply rooted in untruths about the community. Right. right. And sometimes and they that, might even consciously that. drink idea that like bisexual people are greedy or are likely to cheat or uh you know can never commit to a single person and yeah. and you know what what's your take on that because i know that you're 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 not one of the bisexual people that's like yeah i just want to chill with one person and i'm done for the rest of my life you know you've, you've had a little bit more complicated love life than that right right right, right. well it <laughs> I will tell you that the majority of people that I met who are bisexual are monogamous mm -hmm. and those who are not monogamous are ethically non-monogamous. Mm -hmm. So I've met disproportionately more straight people who are unfaithful to their partners, who really just want as many people as they can get, mm -hmm. you know? all of those those tropes that they they feel like that must fit the bisexual person because the bisexual person is attracted to everybody therefore <laughs> they must be trying to get with everybody they must like me they must like her how can i compete with that that's the one how yeah. can i compete with that that is something that somebody who a like, partner of mine said to me really oh, when wow. i was in high school i was like hey, I think I'm bisexual. And they're like, I don't know if I can deal with that. If you like guys and you like girls, how am I supposed to compete with that? I'm already competing with all the guys. And I'm like, you're not. I've chosen <laughs> you. You're not competing with anyone. Oh why gosh. do you think that? Yeah. So why, do, why would you think that because I'm also attracted to people who were born women, mm -hmm. <laughs> why why does that have anything to do with you and it really doesn't mm -mm. like it doesn't at all yeah, no. and people they take that personally they right. feel insecure because of it because they're insecure even in you know the world of heterosexual dating mm -hmm. and they don't know how to express that in a healthy way right right yeah I think I think that you know people will will come up with any excuse to project their insecurities on other people. Like I'm insecure, <laughs> but it's your fault. If you weren't like this, then I wouldn't be insecure, and that's just not how it works, you know. It's like okay, so with being poly, the biggest thing that people 
say, well, I couldn't do that. I just get too jealous. I don't like to share. And I'm like, well, you don't have to. That's, that's the beauty of it. You have, you don't have to, if, if polyamory is not for you, then don't be polyamorous. Right. <laughs> Right, right. You know, you don't, you don't have to push yourself and to share their partners with anyone else. A, yeah. a single poly person can have people that's monogamous with them. You know, I mean, that's certainly fine. There's, there's all yeah. different ways to, to, to be whatever you know, label there is. But yeah, I mean, there's no inherent uh, equivocation between being bi and being poly. I mean, it does no. obviously overlap sometimes because that's how people work, but you know, it's just not, I mean, I yeah. know people that like, oh, such and so's daughter came out as bi, that must mean that she's poly. And I'm like, no, that's not how this works at all. <laughs> no, no. And, and when people say things like that, I like to point out, I am bisexual, but both of my partners are straight. They're cool with the arrangement they're poly identified people they are straight people mm -hmm. and I think that more straight people need to be comfortable with the poly label yeah because so many people they don't consider it mm -hmm. there are a lot of people out there that they get confused about their feelings and they they, they you know ransack these these supposed supposedly monogamous relationships with like infidelities or secrets and it's like you don't guys don't have to do that you know yeah. there's a whole other community of people out there that <laughs> accept that maybe you don't feel like your needs are being met by a single person so don't just 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 don't be with the people that are that are mono that are just solely monogamous and are not okay with that program right like honesty Yes, honest. that's not ethical cheating. That's a thing that people are always saying. Like, well, why'd you even get married if you're like with someone else? And I still think that's cheating. It's like cheating in a relationship is what the people in the relationship decide it is. Right. Absolutely. So some people are like, looking at pornography is cheating. It's like, I mean, no, not really. But if you feel that strongly about it and you don't want a guy or a girl who, or, or a non-binary person that looks at pornography, they just don't take one. Like, exactly. But there are choices out there. Go back to that later. Cause I know we can do a whole video on, on poly culture too. Cause that's, oh. that's big, different can of worms there, but. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask about because I know obviously we're getting your perspective as a bi woman uh, mm. but one thing that you always hear from outside of the bi community is that bi men have a lot more trouble with biphobia do you think that's true I do think it's true but I also think it's the difference is that it manifests in different ways with women because of the sexist culture that we live in that wants to you know sexualize everything Mm -hmm. they sexualize bisexuality they see it as a fantasy they they see it as oh gosh i would love it if i could be with two girls at the same time <laughs> but with bisexual men they're more likely to be seen as closeted gay mm -hmm. they're effeminate they're not man enough if 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 they've been with other men yeah. like because two girls together is a plot for a porno for some people but yeah. two guys together is not and I mean, we live because, in a patriarchal society and yeah. most, of, most of the men in the patriarchy are uh heterosexual and so you know what they think is sexy is sexy and what they think is not sexy is gross even though I mean they're not the only people in the world so <laughs> and I think I, some of it also comes down to you know that that whole um the toxic masculinity culture where we raise our kids our boys to to not feel they're not supposed to feel emotions they're not supposed to they're supposed to be macho like burly like defenders of the family for defenders of the world you know and it's an unrealistic expectation that people have set for men right and anyone who falls outside of that 
bisexual men, gay men, trans men. It's it's like by golly, they've they have just uh, betrayed what it is to be a man. Yeah, absolutely. And that is the problem. Yeah, because the the thing about toxic masculinity is it's self reinforcing. You know, it's this thing mm-hmm. where you have to fight so hard to fit these all these rules and laws and you and you, you're going to fight to get ahead in this system and then there's other people who are just like screw your system i'm not going to be involved with that and people get really bitter you know they do I think that that it's easier for men to understand gay men because they just think that they're like some sort of you know alien creature that's completely different than a normal heterosexual yeah. man who would like to date a woman and then when you get a bi guy and who kind of blurs this line in their head because it doesn't exist there are gay dudes who are perfectly masculine you know? <laughs> they're not mm-hmm. separate oh yeah species than hetero men but you know they like to think that but you know you get these bi guys that kind of blur that line and and i don't know i think that that gay men are, are often as hostile to bi men as everyone else that's hostile to bi men because you get they get this like sense of like they're betraying their community, you know. By... Yeah. And I feel like from the perspective of people who are born women, women born, you know, female, they kind of experience that same thing too from some of the lesbian community because there's that whole like, oh, you got to be a gold star lesbian. You could have never slept with any men like ever. And it's cares. <laughs> like who cares? Who really, yeah. really cares? Like, so it's is like, I mean, I had a change that happens in my body depending on what gender I sleep with, because I didn't yeah. know. <laughs> like I I had a I had somebody tell me like it's just like I was involved with them and she was a lesbian and she was saying all these horrible things about bisexual women and saying that, you know lesbians don't like them because they don't want anyone they don't want penis around their women and I'm like they're women like (laughs) no (laughs) no you don't own anybody oh man (laughs) oh I don't get you all little romantics at all anyway. All this dating stuff is, is confusing and, and weird to me. So. <laughs> but, you know, I get that. It, I mean, the main thing, you know, I, I, I wanted to kind of do our little intro to, to bisexuality. And I do appreciate you taking the time to do that because I know wife and mother and working mom and all that stuff. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you for your valuable time. And, You're uh, welcome. We'll have to do this again so we can talk about uh, polytropes and polyculture and all that fun stuff too. So, <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>